Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Adapter Cards. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from CompTIA A Plus 22701, our Essentials Exam, Section 1.9, where we need to summarize the function and types of adapter cards, video adapters, multimedia adapters, IO adapters, and communications adapters. But before we get into the details of those adapter types, let's talk about what we would expect to see with the different adapter card architectures. If we start looking at the motherboard of our computer, we can see these slots that have been put on the computer. And the reason they're there is because our computers from the very beginning, we needed a way to modify and add and be able to customize the functionality of our computers. And so we not only have what comes on the motherboard, but we've got these really great slots there. We can plug in our own video cards. We can plug in additional communications cards or additional multimedia cards. And really, we can make our computer work exactly the way we'd like. If you see any adapter card uh, slots like this, these are PCI cards. And you can see not just the 32-bit PCI, but the 64-bit PCI slots. And you'll notice that the different slots have different uh, connectors in them, these different bridges going across where you can only fit the right type of card in there. That's something that universal, universally you'll see across adapter cards, memory connectors, it's, it's intended to be engineered this way. So you cannot plug in the wrong kind of card onto your motherboard. It either fits or it doesn't, which means when you're installing it and it's not fitting, you may want to stop for a moment and have a look and make sure that the card you're trying to slide in there doesn't have something that's preventing it from going into that slot. You may be trying to plug in the wrong card into the wrong kind of slot. If you see any of these on your computer, you'll notice that they are PCI slots. In fact, it's kind of hard to see here, but the actual motherboard has next to it 64 PCI number one, 64 PCI number two. If you're watching this on our HD version, you can probably see PCI number two and PCI number one written right there on the motherboard. So sometimes there's no guessing. You don't have to remember what it looks like. It's written right there on the motherboard. Those keys that were on those PCI slots actually refer to these types of 3.3 volt and 5 volt signals. So these different cards you plug in may require different types of voltages. This particular card is a modem card. It's relatively old, and it was designed to work in places where you had both 3.3 volt and 5 volts available to you. So it'll work in almost any environment there. If you're trying to plug in a device and it's not fitting, it may be that one of these particular pin connectors, one of these keys that are there, are not on that adapter card. It's not going to work on your particular environment. Here's a different adapter card. You see this one's a little bit longer. It's a 64-bit expansion card. This one is an Ethernet adapter designed for a 64-bit environment. It also works on 3.3 volt and 5 volt signaling pathways on the bus. So it will be powered through either. And it has this other keyway right here, this other spot. And if that's there, we know that everything after that point is a 64-bit. So that's why this is designed to fit that way. If that was a little bit larger, you might be able to put it into a 30-bit, 32-bit connection. But this one is specifically designed only for 64-bit. It's only going to fit into something that is a 64-bit expansion interface PCI slot on the motherboard itself. When you start talking about installing video cards in a computer, you're talking about a video adapter. It's going to need a lot of throughput. Video requires high throughput and high capabilities. Most video cards themselves are very complex. They have their own CPUs and their own fans built right onto them. And they're going to need to transfer a lot of information to and from the bus. We knew early on we just weren't going to be able to use standard PCI cards to do that. And so the industry created a new type of video interface called an accelerated graphics port, or AGP. We usually don't call them accelerated graphics port. We almost call them an AGP card or an AGP port. These days, most motherboards are using PCI Express. It's a much faster throughput. And it's one that allows our video cards to be able to send a lot more information back and forth onto the bus of the computer. But occasionally, you'll run into some graphics adapters that are on some older systems. And they will require, or at least those motherboards will allow you to install an AGP card into them. Almost always, there's video that's built into the motherboard. But if it has that AGP slot, we could buy an AGP compatible board here, plug it right into that slot, and get a much better throughput and a much better video experience. The motherboard connectors for those are usually labeled. And you'll see right here, AGP connection. That's your AGP expansion slot. It looks a little bit shorter 
than a standard PCI. And again, you wouldn't be able to take an AGP and put it into PCI and vice versa. This is one where it's really specific only for AGP. That's the only thing you can do in this slot is put AGP video card into that. It doesn't do anything else which is probably why it's one of the reasons why we really don't see AGP much anymore. If we can put everything in a PCI Express and run everything from PCI Express, just makes sense to do it that way. Here's a close up of the AGP. One thing that's nice about this is not only do you have these very, very tiny little connections. Notice there's a lot of connections on here, not just the larger connections we're used to seeing, but they're all interlaced here with some smaller ones. It has to really fit in there just so. Because of that, a number of the high-end graphic cards and other adapter cards as well have these little hooks on them. And the motherboards will also have a place where you can put the hook on there so that the card will always stay in the slot. One of the problems that we've had through the years is that these expansion cards tend to pop out of the slots, especially if you ship them or you're moving them around a lot, or just the differences in the, the heat that, uh, that heats them up and then they cool down and contract can occasionally have a card slide slowly, slowly, slowly out of one of those, those ports. But with this hook in place, it can't go anywhere. It's really installed quite well. And you're seeing that more and more on the cards that we have these days.